standing on the mountain Who is on the earth moving on the walls who's holding up the moon who is peeling back the dogs with the burning light of noon who is standing on the mound Who is on the earth below? Who is bigger than the heavens? And the lover of my soul. Sing that one time. Who is moving on the wall? Who is holding up the moon? With a burning light of noon Who is standing on the mountain Who is on the earth
Well, a very good morning to you, Kensington Temple. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord this Mothering Sunday? Are you full of joy this morning? Are you full of hope this morning? Are you full of expectation? Our God is good, amen? Praise God. Why don't you stand with me this morning? Welcome the person next to you. We are so pleased to see you here in the house of the Lord. And we are trusting God for a wonderful day as we gather together to worship Him in spirit and in truth. And so why don't we lift up our voices as I hand to Sam and the worship team and let's praise God. Amen. Welcome to church. It's great to have you with us. God bless you. Amen, church. Can we take our hands and cut them? And our feet and move them a little bit. Is that okay? Hey. Dreadful rises we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon Strength to rise, strength to rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength to rise, strength to rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength to rise, strength to rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Let's go again. Strength to rise, strength to rise as we wait. 
church. The everlasting God, you do not fade, you won't grow weary. You're the defender of the defender of the weak. You come for those in you need. You come for those in need. You lift us up on wings like.
wonderful God. What a lovely king. What a beautiful Savior.
song is so sweet. Let's just sing it. Just the vocal, please. You are worthy of it all. Just practice it for heaven. Come on, church. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things. From you are all things. And to you are all things. And to you are all things. You deserve the glory. You deserve the glory. the glory Lord you deserve the praise oh God I wonder if we could just allow ourselves to be still in the presence of the Lord and allow ourselves to enjoy the fact that he alone is worthy allow ourselves to enjoy that he is in control allow ourselves to enjoy that he is the strong and mighty God and just rest in his presence and just rest in his joy and take pleasure in his pleasure we worship you Lord We worship you, Lord. After we have sung, after we have praised, after we have worshipped, we still ourselves before you and enjoy you and enjoy your blessing. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings, for your presence, for your rest. The Bible says there remains a place for rest. And perhaps today is the most fitting day a day where we celebrate a people who are constantly working, moving, toiling day and night to just enter into God's rest. Amen. Just place your hand on your heart if you can. And speak to your heart and tell your heart, enter into God's rest. can tell your heart, be still and know that the Lord is God. Be still and know that the Lord is God. In Jesus' name, amen. Give the Lord one more shout of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As you take your seats in the house this morning,
a happy and warm welcome to every single one in the room today. We welcome the Lord and we welcome each other. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. If you are here for the first time, welcome. Welcome into the house of the Lord where we shout with praise and we enjoy the stillness of His presence. If you're watching us online, we trust that the Lord is blessing you there, keeping you and revealing Himself to you. Now I hear today is a special day. Eh, yeah? So how about we give a loud Happy Mother's Day to everyone watching online. Happy Mother's Day to every one of you moms grandparents, godmothers out there. And we will have different ways of celebrating that throughout the service this morning and in the 11 o'clock service. We are just going to welcome the pastors to continue this morning. Thank you, Pastor Scott. And thank you, Lilis. Good morning, everyone. It is a great day to be in the house of the Lord, and we are going to honor and celebrate all the mothers in the house later in the service. So do stay tuned for that. We have Pastor Claudette bringing the Word of God to us this morning. The theme and the focus of our sermon is what's living within you. How many of us know as believers if we carry God's Word, God's promises, God's truth, that we're going to ultimately communicate that out. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be great later on in the service. This evening at our 6 p.m. City Night service, we're continuing our recently started series on the seven I Am declarations of Jesus that you find in John's gospel. So if you are keen to understand more about each of those seven declarations that he makes, come out with us on the, this evening at 6 p.m. at our City Night service, and you'll be blessed by the Word of God in that. How many of us love to pray in the house of the Lord? Amen. God is moving, our prayer meeting is growing both in number, but more than that, in the power and the presence of God. And we want to encourage as many of you as possible to come out on Wednesday evenings, 13th of March. Come and connect with us, come and join with us, and enjoy a significant time together in the presence of God as we pray, as we worship, as we warfare, as we press in in intercession to see spiritual shifts that need to happen, both across the global body of Christ, but also across the nations of the world. So we really want to encourage everyone that can make it out to come and connect with us on Wednesday evening. And we want to extend a wonderful invitation. The church is growing, God's people are coming, and we have a wonderful welcome lunch for anybody who is a newcomer to Kensington Temple in the last three to six months. We want to extend an invitation to you next Sunday after our 11 a.m. service to come to our welcome lunch where you will get to meet with some of the staff, some of the pastoral team. We will have a lovely lunch ready for you, help you find your first steps with us at KT, how you can get connected, but also we just want to get to know you better. In a large, large church like this, it's so easy to miss people service by service, week by week, and so we want to set aside some time next Sunday to really honor you and celebrate you. So if you are new, that's anybody in the last six months, we want to encourage you to come out next Sunday straight downstairs into the lower hall after our 11 a.m. service. And just finally, before I move on this morning, we want to remind everyone that obviously Easter is coming. And so if you look at your March edition of the Revival Times, you can see on pages 8 and 9 our theme, our heart, and our focus for Easter this year. And the focus is really three-pronged, the moment, the silence, and the movement. And it unpacks Good Friday, Silent Saturday, as many of us know, and then obviously Resurrection Sunday. So we will have our regular 10.30 a.m. communion service right here in the KT building on Good Friday. And then on Saturday, our music director, Jordan, has produced a short 
clip movie that we will be releasing on the KT YouTube channel. So you'll be able to watch that at 1 p.m. It's about 25, 30 minutes long. So you'll really enjoy that on Saturday as they dig deeper into the Easter story. And then on Easter Sunday, we're going to have our three regular services where we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, at 9 a.m., 11 a.m. And then we have a wonderful praise party, prayer, worship service in the evening at 6 p.m. So be blessed in all of that in Jesus' name. Let's welcome Pastor Claudette now as she takes us further in the service. Let's welcome her. Amen. Well, as we know, today is the correct term, actually, is Mothering Sunday. And uh, there's a little honor and appreciation of mothers today. And so I wanted to say thank you to every biological mother in the house today for all you've done and all you do. In Lily's prayer, she said what was on my heart, which is the busyness of a mother, the having to get up and the having to do. There's no choice when you have young babies and children. The demands never, ever stop. And from the time that you give birth, you are a mother forever and ever and ever. It just doesn't stop. But there's something about mothers that you just keep going for the sake of those that you have given birth to. We also want to give some honor today to those who call themselves spiritual mothers. They have input into the lives of people over the years. And we don't forget you today at all. It's really important that we acknowledge. There are also mothers who have adopted children and yet never born. And they are mothers. So there are many categories of mothers today. And I wanted to say thank you for allowing God to make you a mother and for being used to impact lives. I'd like to pray a prayer. And so, Father, your word says in Proverbs 31, often quoted, but it says in verses 27 and 28, she looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. How can she when she's so busy, caring, bringing up, nurturing? Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Of course, that's in an ideal world and in an ideal situation. You would have an excellent family in Hassani and Corin here today. And look at their four or three, four, yeah, four of their children behind them. And perhaps in church life, this is the picture that we have of perfect family. Children secure with parents who live for them, who give their best to them. But it's not always the scenario, is it? There are single fathers and there are single mothers. And as I pray today, I want to acknowledge all of the different scenarios that we may find ourselves in. Father, I thank you for the families which you have built and they're built in a way that society would look and think, why is my family not like that? How could my family be like that? So for those that I call whole families, families who have obeyed your word, grown up together in your word, produced children in your word, and can show society who they are. Thank you for those mothers that obey your word and become all that you've asked them to be. And yet for mothers out there today who have a different situation, a different scenario, single due to circumstances. You judge not, you love, you keep, you strengthen. So for every type of mother here today, the spiritual mother who have, has taken on board the lives of people to nurture them, for the mother who has adopted a child or two, and for the mother who was born, May they be blessed today as we are thankful to you for every life and every scenario. Deepen their understanding of motherhood 
and enrich their lives for all that they have given. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. Now, after the service, as you're leaving the building, if you are a biological mother or you're a mother who adopted a child or two, there will be a gift for you. And if there are enough and you present yourself as a spiritual mother, you may well get a, lift, but we, a, a, a gift. But we know that spiritual mothers are very forgiving and understand that today they may not be prioritized, and that's okay. But do, after the service, as you leave, you will be presented with a gift, mothers. And just a final little something coming up now by video for you, mothers. So God bless you, and thank you for your time. because you are amazing. I'm thankful to you because you always look out for me. You teach me how to follow Jesus. And make me a better child of God. You always protect me. And you know what is surely best for me. For this we want to say Happy Mother's Day! Amen. What a wonderful video. What wonderful children celebrating Mothering Sunday, as Pastor Claude F has corrected us. We like to say Mother's Day, but it is Mothering Sunday. And it's a wonderful day for us all to celebrate. And also, I'm, I'm just aware that many may have lost their mothers. Um, and it's also time to reflect on the memories that you have of your mother and the things that she would have done to help you to get to where you are now. And also just, yeah, it's just one of those times, I think it's a time of reflection, as well as a time of giving thanks for what God is doing for the mothers in this house at this time. I'm going to just do our tithes and offerings now, our regular times of tithe and offering. If you're a visitor here in the house, um, this is something that we do every week, uh, just to honor the Lord, to give back what he's given to us and to um, acknowledge that he is the one that actually sustains us. And so we love to give of our tithes and offerings, and it's actually an extension of our worship here. So if you have your Bibles with you, you can turn to Mark 12, 41 to 44. And Jesus is basically in the temple in this story, and he's with his disciples, and he witnesses something that he uses as an example to teach his disciples about the importance of giving. It says... And he sat down opposite the treasury, and he watched the people putting money into the offering box. Many rich people put in large sums. And a poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which make a penny. And he called his disciples to him, and he said to them, Truly I say to you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the offering box. For they all contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. It's a beautiful passage, and it's a really good measure and a really good example of the fact that God doesn't measure our gift by the amount that we give, but he measures our gift by our heart. You know, he knows exactly what you have and what you don't have, but he also knows exactly what you desire to give and what you don't desire to give. And when I read this passage, I'm really encouraged in this um, widow and her trust that she put in the Lord because she had two coins and she could have said, right, I'm just going to give the Lord one coin because I just need to have a backup option. I just need to make sure that I've still got one coin left. But she said, no, I'm going to give you both the coins, Lord. I'm going to trust you. And in doing that, Jesus is giving us all a, a well, in doing that, she, Jesus is giving us a great example of what he expects us to do. He expects us to operate with extraordinary levels of trust. And I think if we're honest about it, sometimes we can have a plan A, B, C, D, and E. 
You know, we can have many different plans going on in our head. Okay, Lord, if you do this, then I'll do this. And if you don't do this bit, then I'm going to do that. And, you know, sometimes we can be playing with the Lord. But this woman, she puts everything in. And it reminds me of the scripture in Ephesians 3.20, which says, Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. It's the reminder that the Lord is actually able to do more than we ever think he could do. You know, we might have our plans, we might have our our man-made plans, but the Lord is saying this morning, put your trust in me because I can actually do way more <laughs> than you even think was ever possible. And so that's the, that's the message today, just to encourage us to step forward in our giving, but also in our levels of trust this week. Whatever the Lord is telling you maybe to trust him in, you know what that thing is. You know what he's saying that you can leave at his feet. Trust him this week and see what he will do for you. He will show you that he is able to do more than you could ever imagine or think. Bless you. Let's stand as we now enter into our time of worship as we give. The offering buckets are coming round with the stewards. Bless you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart. Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Would you open the eyes of my heart? Open the eyes of my heart. Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. Yes, I want to see you. I want to see you. Would you open the eyes of my heart? Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up.
of our faith. It doesn't matter if it's a special day for women or mothers today or if it's not a special day for them. The Lord wants us to fix our eyes on Jesus. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. I want to see you. Just 
worship you, Lord. We look at you. We fix our eyes on you. Nothing else matters. When we see you, everything fades into the background. When we see you, indeed all of the hard work, all of the toil, all of the labor fades into the background. When we see you, everything we do on a Sunday, on a Wednesday, fades into the background when we see you. Man's opinion of us fades into the background when we see you. Who is right and who is wrong fades into the background when we see you and you just want us to see you your beautiful face your glory we thank you Lord thank you Lord Jesus hallelujah thank you Jesus praise Jesus amen Thank you, Sam and team. Why don't you take your seats in here today? Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Isn't he just beautiful? Isn't he wonderful? Our Lord Jesus Christ. Worthy of praise, worthy of recognition, worthy to always be lifted up. He comes to us when we lift him up. When we remember him, he more than remembers us. And he loves us today. Men and women. He loves us. Amen? So today, my title is What's Living in You? And especially for mothers today, especially for women. On Friday, I understand it was International Women's Day. Do we, do, is there an International Men's Day? Do they have that? Yeah? Oh, they did. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? I don't really know what those things are about and if the world um, is happy to acknowledge and, and, and say thank you to men and women and, and, and special categories. It's all fine. What I run away from when it comes to looking at biblical things is to be very careful not to walk in the spirit of the world. So the spirit of the world would say that women should be on top and women should be leading and women should be doing this and women should be doing that. And where that walk takes you to is a spirit of feminism. That's not of God. So I, I'm not a guru or a, 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 a person that flags and flies the flag. Women should be doing this and women... I'm not like that. Why am I here on the platform preaching today? Because I was asked to by men. And because God led them to ask me. Simple. No other reason. So we want to be careful not to walk in the spirit of the world. The rights we have are what the Bible says about us as men, as women. And, well, we're going to talk about creation very shortly. So once more, one more time, a big thank you to, to the mums in the house. Our scripture today is taken from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. The ESV says, I'm reminded of your sincere faith. A faith that, first, that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois, and your mother, Eunice, and now, I am sure, dwells in you as well. So the Apostle Paul, this is his very last known writings, his very last words written and sent to Timothy before he was executed. The Bible doesn't put the books all in order, but this was probably the last words known that Paul had written to his Timothy. 
And we're always speaking about raising up Timothys, but Paul loved this young man, and Paul knew that he had to prepare Timothy for the time that he would no longer be on the earth, he, Paul. And would Timothy be strong enough? Would Timothy know what to do as the persecutions and the difficult times came? Would Timothy know what to do when his mentor was killed? Would he stand the test? And so the writings are so important in First and Second Timothy about this young man who Paul has sown into. Um, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. So I'm going to first of all just talk about and establish something here. The female part of creation, just so that we don't doubt who we are, women, the Bible talks about the fact that he created the male and female. So we look in Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 27. I'm reading this one from what's called the CEB, the Common English Bible. Then God said, let us make humanity in our image to resemble us so that they may take charge of the fish of the sea and the birds in the sky, the livestock, and all the earth, and all the crawlings, crawling things on earth. God created humanity in God's own image. In the divine image, God created them. Male and female, God created them. There's nothing there that says, I created one higher than the other, one lower than the other. It just says he created humanity in his image, male and female. I read it um, from the Amplified Bible. Uh, version, Genesis chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Genesis chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. This is the book, the written record, the history of the generations of the offspring of Adam. When God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. He created them male and female. When God made man, which means humans, he created them in the likeness of God. He created them male and female and blessed them and named them both Adam, man, at the time they were created. So understand that we are made in the image of God. Male and female were made in the image of God. That means that God has the characteristics, the attributes that you might typically see on earth, that men carry, I use the word typically carefully. A few weeks ago when I was preaching, I demonstrated the strength of men physically with some young men that are here today and were my, my point in the platform. They were way stronger than me. And there are some attributes that men in general may have that women may not have. And those attributes you find, those characteristics you find in God. But equally, there are attributes and characteristics of women that men do not have, but yet they are found in God, male and female. The image is both in God. What parts of the image of God remind us of women? We acknowledge right now the difficulty in pointing out differences between men and women in the ever-changing um, agendas on identity. Um, and men and women, especially when it comes to having and caring for children, will act similarly. A father will lay down his life for his child, just like a mother. Isn't that right? So the care is still equal. It's still the same in that sense. And yes, with the current agendas today, apparently we need to be careful but God made man and woman. He made male and female. The Bible says it. I believe it. Hallelujah. So what, what things do we see that maybe are more the, the female side of the characteristics of God? When I look in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, the love chapter, we call it. It, it speaks about this. God's love in us does not insist on its own rights or its own way. 
for it is not self-seeking. And women, perhaps more so mothers, they can seem to be sacrificial because they put their children first in every way, shape and form. Now, I am talking about the scenarios where everything is wonderful and good and everything, but really and truly, even a mother who is in incredible difficulty is still going to put her child first where she can. And that tells me that this love of God doesn't insist on its own rights or its own ways. A mother doesn't insist, I need, I need, because she's busy feeding her children, tending to her children, caring for her children. And so it's a sacrificial thing. She's not seeking for herself. How many mothers in this house have come to us asking for prayer for their children? Not for themselves, but for their children. In spite of their age, even if the mama is 80, she's still asking for prayer for her children. So, not self-seeking, but sacrificial. Proverbs 31, verse 12. Proverbs 31, verse 12 says, she comforts, encourages, and does him only good as long as there is life within her. So again, what you may see in God and what you may see in women and mothers is a person who comforts. She's used to comforting her children. She's used to bringing comfort. She encourages. She wants to say good things. She wants good for them. So especially mamas, they will encourage their children. They come from school and the teacher said this or that. And it's like, no, 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 no. That's not who you are. I know some mothers like that actually in here. That they tell their children, you don't listen to what the teacher says about you. What does God say about you? And they nurture. And they do good as long as there's life within them. Because they desire good for their children. Even when relationships are broken, they desire good. Very funny, I was watching, um, I glimpsed, I wasn't watching, a programme. That's one of those reality TV show thingies. And the man on there, they were having a moment, this little group of people, and uh, I don't know, they were talking about, I don't know, things that are cathartic in their lives. And this man said that um, he'd broken relationship with his two daughters and then he began to weep. And how sad it was that even now, while he's on the telly, his two daughters may watch and still not reach out to speak to him or forgive him. And how difficult those times are when even at the best of moments, a mother wants to encourage or to comfort or to do good, and there is brokenness in relationships. And how do those relationships come back together? But it doesn't stop the mother from hankering after that child. The mother may keep her distance out of wisdom, but deep down, she's waiting for that moment when there would be reconciliation so she can comfort again and encourage again and do good again. And those are things that God does. So you see attributes, you see characteristics of the female in God himself. We're made in his image, women. We're made in his image. And those aspects of us, he made them. So mothers and women, really, we have a place and we have a purpose. We don't need to think or act or behave like the world does. We need to think, we need to act, we need to behave like the word tells us to. Women are created by God, and as we learned, and, and they have a place and a purpose in his kingdom and in the earth throughout the ages. Now, one of our... Um, young studious staff members on Tuesday, Kwabena, he was doing a devotion for us and he happened to choose two women in the Bible where um, I learned a couple of things about them. And so I want to thank him for helping to build my sermon today. And I'm going to just speak about a number of women, including the two that he raised, and then ask you what you think about them. Rahab, did she know 
what was going to take place as a result of her actions. Rahab is a converted Canaanite, so she was from the land of Canaan. And Canaan are the descendants of Ham, the son of Noah. And they were not Israel's friends. But Rahab made a decision to protect the spies of Israel who were sent to assess the military strength of Jericho, believing their God and ensuring her family were saved. Rahab, who was known as a prostitute, had a, an extended household, really, and Jericho was going to be destroyed by the Israelites. And when the spies came, she was asked to help them and protect them. What made her heart move? Certainly God. But she made a decision that perhaps she did not know where it would lead to today. And that decision caused her family to be saved. They were not lost because of her. And there's some heritage there. Um, that comes out of Rahab's own actions. But did she know when she made that drastic decision, I'm going to protect the spies even if they kill me here in Jericho. But she had asked and she trusted God to protect me and my family. They were saved and they converted and became part of the nation that God had chosen. Ruth in the Bible, we all hear about Ruth and Naomi, Naomi and Ruth. Did she know? Indeed, the marriage of Ruth and Boaz brings together the lines of Lot and Abraham. So Lot is the nephew of Abraham who decides to choose Sodom and Gomorrah. And then he has to escape. But they had become separated over generations, really. But Lot is the father of Moab. So the Moabites, again, who came against Judah continually, continually. There was division between them, although they were from the same lineage. Ruth was then a Moabite, so she was a descendant of Lot. Abraham is the father of Judah, who's the father of Perez, and Boaz comes from the line of Perez. Out of those two lines comes Jesus Christ. Now, did Ruth know when she made the decision to say, your God will be my God and your people my people, did she know that she would be the ancestor of Jesus Christ? When she made that decision, what was living inside her? What was living inside Rahab already. Anna, the prophetess, the lady who was on her knees at the age of 84, she's in the temple, and she's still on her knees. What's she doing? She's prophesying and fasting and praying for the coming of Jesus. Did she know the impact of her fasting and praying? the impact of her prophetic words in the temple. She lived there. Why? Why was this already living in her? Her father was called Samuel, or Penuel. He's mentioned once only in the New Testament in the book of Luke. He was a member of the tribe of Asher, which means happy. And his name means face of God. Anna's father was called face of God. That lived in her, that she sought the face of the Lord all the days of her life. As a widow, I'm told she lived in the temple praying and prophesying. Did she know when she was born to Phanuel that this was what was going to take place through her? And she was one, wasn't she, that came to see that prophetic word come to pass when Jesus was brought to the temple, then she knew her job was done. Did she know what was living inside of her? Mamas, what's living 
inside of you today? Do you know? Where will it lead to? Who will it touch? I would love that my father's name had been face of God. Wow, what a heritage. Deborah, a judge in Israel. Deborah was a prophet, Tess, a judge, a counsellor. This is what the scripture said about her in Judges 5, chapter 7. Deborah arose as a mother for Israel. So in her role as mother, she's prophesying, counselling, judging. Then you, Deborah, rose up. You got up, a mother in Israel. I don't know what type of mother she was. Was she married? I think so. There are two different versions of who she married, so I leave that alone. Did she have children? Possibly. Did she have spiritual children? Certainly. Because she was a living example of a godly judge. So judges, of course, were there before Israel demanded a king from the Lord, and then they had kings from then on. And she was the only woman who was a judge. How did she get there? Because of what was living in her. So much so that she knew what to do when it came to battle, and she wasn't afraid to do what God led her to do. What was living inside Deborah? And did she know where it would lead? So with her much desire, she brought victory against the Canaanites. We've heard about them already. She was a woman of faith in God. Did she know that by that victory, the nation continued of Israel, continued, continued until God's purposes were and are being fulfilled? But what about the lady that struck, struck Sisera to deliver Israel? Jael. How many people know her name in the Bible? She was the one that, that, that got the victory, that God used. She was a wife, so probably she was a mother. Did she know? Boom. When she obeyed God, what would happen? That she was involved in saving a nation. There's a lady in the New Testament called Priscilla. Did she know? Priscilla is always named with her husband, Aquila. They followed Jesus Christ. They supported Jesus Christ in his ministry on earth. They supported in substance, but they supported in teaching, in evangelism. They were giving out what was living inside of them as they learnt and grew and served Jesus. So Priscilla is named with her husband. Sometimes we're doing things with someone and sometimes we're doing it alone, but never without God. But did she and her husband, did they know that by speaking what they were learning from Jesus, it would mean that many lives would come to Jesus? What was living in them that now lives in us today? Because of their evangelism, their ability to speak, to share what they knew, what was living in them. One of my favourite ladies in the Bible, Esther or Hadassah, is her correct name. She's probably a, a direct descendant of Jesse, so again, Judah. Out of her obedience, it leads to a nation surviving, leading to Jesus. Now, she knew to, in, in, to a degree, because her uncle Mordecai had said to her, if you don't go before the king, we're, we're finished. And God would have to raise somebody else up, so go before the king. Go and plead on the behalf of our nation. So she knew there was a lot at stake. But did she know where it would lead today? She obeyed what her uncle said and the unction of the Lord to the detriment of perhaps losing her life if the king did not accept. But she took the risk and she went. Faith was living in her. And that ability to rise up in difficult times. How many mothers have turned around and done something in, in light of, of the plight that their children may have been in? And when they finish this, wow, didn't know I was capable of doing that. Because they grabbed the moment and their self was not as important 
as those children? Did Esther know that her actions would one day lead to the living saviour living in each of us today? Mary, did you know? Wonderful song. Mary is also of the tribe of Judah. She said to the angel, go ahead, she said, you're going to make me pregnant. The Holy Spirit is going to come upon me and make me pregnant. Do unto me according to your will. Let it be done. Self-sacrifice. I'm going to become a mother in a time where I should not. I'm going to take embarrassment and shame because I'm not yet married, but I'm going to trust you. What was living in her? Faith. Because of her obedience, she gave the world the physical Jesus Christ. What's living in you? I could talk about so many other women in the Bible. There are a lot more than I thought. <laughs> but some of them would have said, why me? I don't fit in. I'm a prostitute. I'm this. I'm that. I'm not of the tribe of Israel. I don't fit in. Why me? But something was living in each of them that caused them to do something that affected the future. Some descended from heartache, from difficult backgrounds. Others, like Mary, perhaps brought up beautifully, but just willing to sacrifice. That was then. God planned it. But some would ask me, but that was then, that's, that was then. What about me now? Let's go back to our text. Let's look at the power of Timothy's family so we can answer those questions right from the beginning. First of all, I'm going to give two definitions. The definition of the word legacy. A legacy means the long-lasting impact of particular events or actions. Look at the impact of those women that we've just spoken about. Long-lasting, right to the point that Jesus came into the earth, died, rose again, and gave eternal life. Definition of heritage, so we're looking at legacy, we're looking at heritage. Heritage is an inherited or established way of thinking. An inherited or an established way of feeling or doing. I'll just give you something. Like my mum, my mum, um, we've looked at her for years, she folds her lips like this. And I found myself doing it now. And I've been told that my grandmother did it. So we inherit, don't we, from our families. We pick up things that we don't even know why we do what we do sometimes. And some of it's good and some of it's not. When it's not good, you bring it before the Lord and you cast it out and you deal with it so that you don't carry heritages that are not godly. But an inherited or established way of thinking, I love that definition, and something that's long-lasting and impactful. So 2 Timothy, again, verse one, uh, chapter 1, verse 5, I'm going to read from the Amplified this time. I am calling upon memories of your sincere... This is Paul speaking to Timothy. He's going to die, and he's remembering so many things that are good about Timothy. He wants to encourage him. I'm calling up memories of your sincere and unqualified faith. Why was his faith unqualified, really? There was, there was nothing in him that would say you were called as an apostle or you were called as this or called as that. But Paul is remembering he was just a, a, a lad being taught. And, and it says the leaning of your entire personality on God in Christ. So Paul is describing Timothy of somebody who took his whole personality and he leaned it on Jesus Christ. Mm, where are our personalities? Mm. In absolute trust and confidence in his power. So 
He's saying to Timothy, I have memories of how sincere you are with your unqualified faith, with the way that you put your entire personality on God in absolute trust and confidence in the power, the wisdom, and the goodness of God. This is the Amplified, it's so long. A faith that first lived permanently in the heart of your grandmother Lois. Mm. Hallelujah. Permanently lived. It wasn't that some days she had faith, our Lois, and it wasn't that some days she didn't. This was permanent, that her daughter Eunice saw it in her, living in her, permanently forever. This was who Lois was, living in her, that Eunice caught, and it lived in Eunice. So it first lived permanently in the heart of your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice, and now I'm fully persuaded, dwells in you also, Timothy. What lived in grandmother, what lived permanently in Eunice, now lives in Timothy. Now, some of us will sit here and think, well, it's too late, isn't it? I only got born again, you know, like 10 years ago. My children are long grown and I can't do anything about it now. Yes, you can. Because your prayers alone are now the hook that will cause God to hear and remember your children and begin to move in their lives. Those of you who have children that you're still able to influence, start now. Be the one that has Jesus Christ and so much faith living in you that that's what's going to happen to your children, to your offspring, to the generations to come. Proverbs 31, 26 says, because I'm asking a question as I close, what's living in you, mothers? Proverbs 31, 26 says, she speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. Do you pray for that? Do you ask God, let me be a woman of wisdom when I open my mouth? Uh, do you ask him, let me give faithful instruction into the lives of those around me? Pray those prayers over your lives because if that's living in you, it's going to live in your children and spiritual children and all of those around you. Proverbs 1, verses 8 to 9. Listen, my son, to your father's instruction. It's very important. And do not forsake your mother's teaching. So the son is being encouraged. Don't forsake her teaching. Are you a mother who teaches? Is your life lessons for others to learn? They are a garland to grace your head and a chain to adorn your neck. What about this? I'm speaking to you women and mothers this morning. Do you see yourself this way? Proverbs 31, verse 10. A capable, intelligent, and virtuous woman. How many of you get up every day and look in the mirror and say, I'm capable, intelligent, and virtuous? Maybe not, but pray it. Speak it into your lives. Who is he who can find her? She's far more precious than jewels, and her value is far above rubies or pearls. She's valuable. Are you valuable? Mothers in here today, way more than jewelry, way more than pearls. Are you valuable? Do you see yourself as valuable? Do you accept that God has made you valuable? Will you, like Isaiah 54, acknowledge what's living in you and ensure that something happens with it? Isaiah 54 encourages um, Israel at the time, but we use it for women. Um, enlarge the place of your tents so that you impact others. Will you stretch out? Will you ask the Lord, let me use what you've given me? Let it live in me so loud that I don't have to present or announce it, but people will see it. My children will learn from it. Hmm. Glory to God. I've got a friend in here for years and years and years. She prayed for her son to be born again. 
And it just looked like he was always going to go the other way. But God was in charge because he heard her prayers. She didn't give up and he's born again today because of her prayers. Can you see your own children living out what they've learned from you like Timothy was living out what, he, what was instilled in him through his grandmother and his mother? Before I end with a prayer again, I just want to read uh, the quote from Galatians chapter 4, verse 27. Galatians 4, 27 in the Amplified. For it is written in the scriptures, Rejoice, O barren woman who has not given birth to children. Break forth into a joyful shout, you who are not feeling birth pangs, for the desolate woman has many more children than she who has a husband. I wanted to share that um, and one more scripture, if I can find it, which um, just speaks of that category of woman. Uh, Psalm 113, verse 9 says again from the Amplified, he makes the barren woman to be a homemaker and a joyful mother of spiritual children, praise the Lord. You see, all of us women are capable of motherhood, whether we have born or not. And I want to encourage you to seek opportunities to become a mother, an encourager, a giver, a helper, a teacher to somebody who would need that, who perhaps does not have a mother or a mother that can input in that way in life. So you're not forgotten, you're not left out, you're not missed out. I'm not. I'm here doing it. And I, am, I never bore physical children. I, I, I want us to pray. Let's stand. Hallelujah. <laughs> Father, yesterday we had the parents to be, to be ministry and they were specifically ministering to couples who desire the fruit of the womb. We pray for every couple that attended yesterday that you will grant them the desires of their hearts, that you will do the miracle that they have been waiting for and they will give testimony to the incredible work being done in this house for each and different situation that goes on. I pray for those who are spiritual mothers. I pray for physical mothers right now, that there will be strength and grace and the power of God in each so that we will be spoken of like Lois and Eunice were, living faith being carried to the next generations. That is who we want to be today, Lord, in your precious name. Amen. And if anybody under the sound of my voice today would say that she's been talking about God things and she's been talking about things that I can't clearly identify with, because I don't belong to this family of God. Let me encourage you today. Jesus Christ came down to earth in the form of a human being. He came down from his throne and he made himself flesh and he walked the earth for 33 years. He understood our humanity, our weakness, our frailty. He understood the life of sin that we were born into because of the fall of Adam and Eve. And God, his father, had a plan to send him to earth to suffer so that we would be brought back. Jesus Christ went to the cross. And on going to the cross, he bore our sins, our shame, our pain. Read Isaiah. 53, if you want to know more. But suffice to say that Jesus Christ went to the cross and he said, I have taken their sins. He won the victory in hell and then he rose victorious, having the power 
to grant us eternal life. If you don't have that today, pray this prayer after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I've heard a short gospel message and I desire to serve you, Jesus. I repent of my sins and I ask you to come into my life and be the Lord of my life. I believe that you are the Son of God. Forgive me of my sins and receive me into your family in Jesus' name. Father, if anybody has prayed that prayer for the first time today, there's help available. We have men and women in blue t-shirts. Go and see them after the service if you want to affirm that your life is now hidden in Jesus Christ, that you belong to him. For those of you at home, please contact our pastoral care department. You can find us on the website. You can call into Kensington Temple and you can get some help and become men and women who live and what you live affects the next generation. Amen. Thank you, worship team, as you bless us today. Amen.
Yeah, we build our lives and we won't be shaken in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much, Sam and the worship team this morning. Don't forget to come and join us this Wednesday. We look forward to seeing you. Come and pray with us. Many of you do join us online. Let's keep the prayer going in the house. Next Sunday, a reminder that we have a welcome lunch for those of you who are newer to the church. And that's after the 11 a.m. service. So we look forward to seeing you then. And please, mothers, as you leave, and many are leaving already, only those in the building, please do receive your gift on behalf of the leadership of Kensington Temple. Enjoy your time with your friends and your family today, this Mothering Sunday. God bless you at home. Thank you so much for watching us. And enjoy the rest of your Mothering Sunday too. God bless you. Amen. Standing on the mount Who is on the earth below Who is bigger than the heavens And the lover of my soul Sing that one time Who is moving on the wall Is holding up the moon. Who's feeling by the dark with a burning light of noon? Who's standing on the mountain? Who is on the earth? Who's moving on the wall? Who's holding up the moon? Who is peeling back the dark with the burning light of noon? Who is standing on the mound? Who is on the earth below? Who is bigger than the heavens? And the lover of my soul. Sing that one time. Who is moving on the wall? 
is holding on the moon. With a burning light of noon Who is standing on the mountain Who is on the earth Who's moving on the wall? Who's holding up the moon? Who is peeling back the dark with the burning light of noon? Who is standing on the mound? 